and welcome to the Cinebeards. Unfortunately, uh, Marcus isn't going to be with us for the next few episodes. Why did you put quotes around, unfortunately? I'm just reading the script here. <laughs> <laughs> the script. The, the pre-written <laughs> script that is always yeah. stuck to in every episode. Yeah, you can really tell by the for like from the format that it's all pre-written. Mm -hmm. You got Ghost Riders. Uh, you got Ghost Riders. Yeah. Yeah, but Ma Marcus is not going to be with us for the next, like, three episodes, which is a little unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah, so to fill in for him, we have got regular guest host, Thomas. It's me! Marcus less... is dead to us! No, we love you, Marcus! I'm the smaller version of you. Less Afrikaans. That's about right. You got the long hair, you got the beard, you. Got the long hair, got the beard. Uh, how's your, your gaming YouTube channel? My gaming YouTube channel could be doing better. He has actually done gaming on YouTube. But I have done gaming on YouTube. <laughs> Marcus. I'm basically Marcus. Outstanding. <laughs> yeah. And of course, Dion is always with us because we recorded his house and he can't miss one. <laughs> we know where he lives. <laughs> and can't. Get us out. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, look at some news. I think before we actually get stuck into the news, <laughs> They're two pretty big trailers that we haven't spoken about yet. Very, very exciting trailers. And that is for the new Mary Poppins movie. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have another fake one. I can't even think of another trailer. Geostorm because... 2, the Geostorming. <laughs> oh god, if that trailer would, would <laughs> well, have come it, up. It would like... actually just be Geostormer. The mm. Geostormers? No, 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 just, just no. more more of a storm. Geostormer. No, it would be... The Stormer than last time. No, it Stormers? would be Geard Butler. <laughs> uh. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about Infinity War. Let's talk about Infinity War. Oh, oh, yeah, we haven't talked about that yet. No, oh, we my have God. not. It's so weird. Like, I've been watching, you know, all your episodes. You Good, well, I was, I was really looking forward to talking about the new Mary Poppins trailer. Yeah. Well, we'll have to put that on the back watch it yet. Me but neither. Some, but somebody <laughs> did recut it with Yondu instead of Mary Poppins. Yes. Yeah, that's the version I watched. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about. All right, Infinity War. Yeah. Oh, that's a good trailer. That, that is, is a good, good trailer. I'm really surprised. Well, actually, no. In retrospect, I'm not because this trailer is is fantastic. Mm. But I'm really surprised that they um, didn't go the route of the Comic Con trailer and go more Guardians heavy. Yeah, yeah. because because the, the I didn't watch the, the Comic Con it's, trailer. It's, it's it's only out in really crap quality, but it's really really good. But it's a, it's a full on crowd pleasing hype trailer yeah uh whereas this one's more about like the gravitas and the I like that. Yeah. apparently no no, no. In, in, in retrospect i can see why but it, I, I was sort of expecting them to release something closer to the comic-con trailer but i'm glad they went the more apparently, serious apparently though um in it thor and thanos have the most screen time in the film yeah yeah so like I'm also quite surprised that they didn't go more Thor heavy with it. Well, no, it's I'm cool. not like because, because again it's a bait and switch. Yeah, like, a lot yeah. of their trailers, thinking back yeah. and rewatching, yeah. are quite bait and switchy, which is kind of cool because it's nice to have your expectations subverted pleasantly. Mm. And yeah. I think Marvel does that with their trailers quite well. Yeah. Subverted so and perverted. Yeah, boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boy. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there's a couple things that I spotted in the in the trailer while we're watching it mm -hmm. first one is and apologies for any accidental spoilers yeah because this is the, all obviously just go theorizing watch the jesus it's two minutes no but i mean like i'm theorizing about what's gonna oh, happen are you, in the are movie you, are you hypothesizing i'm so hypothesizing you don't have any evidence to suggest i do the evidence comes from the trailer no yeah. but Incredible. anyway it, it, it looks like loki isn't just like siding with thanos by giving him the tesseract no nah. it seems from the way it's shot that Thor's life is being threatened and Loki's like no don't kill my brother it does seem like it it's, does he's seem doing way, it under and, duress yeah and it, I don't think they because he was sort of working for Thanos by proxy yeah like I, I don't think that ended on particularly good terms anyway yeah the, well no the last thing w that was said by the leader of the Chitauri to him mm -hmm. was that there's nowhere in the universe that you can go to hide. Yes. Yeah. He will right. find. Yeah, that's the line I can remember. So yeah, like I don't think it's just a case of like Thanos, buddy. Hey, how's it going? I, I got this for you. Like I, I don't think it's a case. All it does. It does look it. like it does look like self-preservation, which is, and also obviously <laughs> for Thor, um, which seems a bit more in keeping with Loki. Uh, yeah, and then the second thing that I spotted was the Hulkbuster armor. Yes. Has a yellow glow to it. Yes, it does. Rather than rather than the, the typical blue of Stark or the red of War Machine. Mm. So, so you think that's Pepper Potts? No, that's Vision. Oh, like, Especially I feel, because I you feel see like... him lying on the table earlier. Mm. I feel like, for so, me, I, I 
I, w- I would love that. I don't quite buy it yet, but I but I would love that. For me, the the shade doesn't look right, uh, unless of course they just toned it down for the trailer, like you know where they for Thor yeah. Ragnarok where they kept both of Thor's eyes. Yeah, which was so uh, cool. We, so it might just be a case of like it's there, but they've toned it down for the trailer, so it's not like a complete giveaway. Because for me, the or, shade or, didn't look right, and that seems like a bit of a... They've changed the color completely, and in the movie, it's going to be green. Ah, which case would support ah. your your Bruce Banners in the mm. theory. Well, I mean, it, it wouldn't even need to be... It wouldn't even need to be green for it to be Banner Yeah, but it there. would be like a little... It would be a nice thematic... It would be, yeah, it would because, be because weird, the, actually, because the, it's the not blue, Hulk in there. Yeah, but the blue is very much connected with Tony Stark, so mm. to have another character in there with the blue would be strange. It's kind of a peachy yellow, so it could, I mean, it could just be, you know, Banner's skin tone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. maybe. Strongest Avenger. Yeah? Strongest Avenger. So yeah, but that's cool. I like that. That was well spotted. Mm. And then Cap at the end there, I had no idea he was that strong, holding back Thanos' hand. I mm. didn't think Captain was that strong either, just like again like uh, you know we know that the universes are separate and it's completely different but just well, you don't know the way that was cut like it could be a case of thanos sort of Going hand coming down his hand coming down simultaneously behind him hulk catches him around the waist <laughs> and is pulling him and cap said they're like oh my god i'm a badass the yes, biggest man, yes. biggest, the strongest of <laughs> 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 and I'll say behind that, I was like, oh. Maybe. You don't know. We we don't, don't know. know. We just They're don't very, know They're very cunning with how they cut these things. They are. They really didn't give too much away, and I'm very happy with that. Well, we know, whoever we speculates know, we know the bit. Whoever speculates the he's going down. Yeah, you think uh, so? I think so. I think so, just so Bucky can have that full redemption arc. Because yeah. yeah. I was rewatching it for. I've been rewatching them from the beginning again. And in the first Avenger, just before he gets blown out to his death, Bucky picks up the shield, holds it, and shoots the exact same way that Cap was doing like 10 minutes earlier in the movie. Yeesh. Like, looks exactly like the same. That's pretty compelling. That's pretty compelling. That's the thing is, like, they, they've been talking so much about him filming on Avengers 4. Yeah, you know, but that's flashbacks the thing. and whatnot. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like you'd never fucking know. But but that would be the perfect thing because four is his last. Yeah, that's his yeah. contract. That's up. his no, not his contract done. Chris Evans himself has said that's it. After well, that, in fairness, he and Robert Downey Jr. have done that before in the past, where they're like, yeah, like. They, they, yeah, I think but, they were supposed it, to leave off make, Ultron or something. Yeah, but it would make sense for yeah. say him him to say that yeah, now for Avengers thing. Four, and people are like, okay, we know he's gonna survive till at least Avengers Four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, there, there's a dead cap. Fucking fox. I would because yeah. we know there's gonna be a major death in Infinity War. Otherwise, it wouldn't. And the, like Hawkeye doesn't count as a major death. Yeah, also he's doing his own thing. Is Nick Which Fury going to be in Avengers I guess his own thing Avengers could just be putting Dying. the Infinity Stones on arrows and then just <laughs> shooting them off into space. Like, good luck, Thanos. Such a <laughs> go eat Thanos. a dick. <laughs> you crashed your ship. What are you going to do now? It, I wonder if Nick Fury is going to be in, in 4. I know he's in um, Captain Marvel. Yeah, but that's, if he's that's gonna be in with three both four. his eyeballs. Yeah. yeah, but it, yeah, I know, but but I'm wondering if he's gonna be in sort of Avengers three and four. I keep calling it Avengers four, thinking of Civil War as three. <laughs> two point. That was two point five. Yeah, two point five. Yeah, 2.5. Um, yeah I, I wonder. I wonder if they're gonna bring him back. I kind of missed him. I know why he wasn't in Civil War because obviously it's too many viewpoints and too cluttered. Yeah. But like. You know, I did kind of miss the guy. I felt a bit weird that he wasn't weighing in on this whole thing. Especially because it was He would definitely else. would have 100% been on Cap's side, I think. Yeah. I think because, so. Because yeah. he would have before before, um, before Winter Soldier been yes. on the other side. But yeah. after Winter Soldier, I think he would have been on I Cap's side. I think someone should show Tony Stark that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think if he'd Maybe. seen that film, he would have been on Cap's side. I think he, yeah, he should spend... Yeah. He should spend some time watching the MCU movies. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Jesus, he's in them, for God's sakes. But All right. damn, Cap is looking handsome with his beard. He's looking rugged. It's mm. it's a good And that's look. not coming from a place of bias. <laughs> <laughs> the bearded men sit and talk about how good other the men be- with beards <laughs> look like. Oh dear. <laughs> oh god. Let's move on. Yeah, move on to uh, Deadpool 2. Yeah, no, but that's a good that's a good standard trailer. It didn't hit as hard as the, the first trailer, I think. The first no. trailer had that really great custom feel to it, like, you know, mm. stuff shot specifically for it. This felt quite uh, manufactured. Yeah, this felt like, sort of, 
it's it's outsourced... like a studio trailer. Yeah. Yes, but still like above average, really. And the film just looks fantastic. It looks enjoyable. I'm happy with all the casting the, choices. The um, the audience scores for the sort of the test groups. Mm -hmm. uh, they had two competing cuts for Deadpool two. The sort in of the, the second final, round of yeah the, yeah, the sort of the final round of or of, focus, of tests, focus yeah. tests. And the one got scored a ninety four, and the other got scored a ninety eight. Really. And the best score the original ever received was ninety one. Now it's not the sort of the most like yeah no reliable metric but that's still it's, that bodes really it well it bodes well for it and that's what's important yeah i'm very excited interestingly enough as well um ryan reynolds has a like proper writing credit on mm. the movie oh really yeah so it's it's not just like the word and after the other writers names so it's not like yeah. okay he did some re revisions and rewrites on it it's actually the, the little ampersand as well meaning mm. that he had proper formative writing and collaboration mm. in it that's cool that's cool makes me say i mean this is sort of a passion project of his for yeah. ages already so yeah yeah so he's a writer producer and actor if he were director of it it would be the the he, b movie holy he grail would basically, <laughs> he'd basically be a hollywood neil breen it would be the b movie egot yeah yeah there we go exactly except for a good movie <laughs> yes Damn it. Uh, oh yeah, you sent you sent me the uh, picture of Gal Gadot's tweet. Yeah. <laughs> of the of the shot of uh, Deadpool with his arms in the crossed position in front of his chest. Yeah. What did she say again? Something like he's he stole my move. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Stop being so derivative. And, and then he said like you know, um, dude stole my look is what she said. <laughs> That's perfect. Dude stole my look. To which he, to which Ryan Reynolds replied, "Imitation is the sincerest form of larceny." <laughs> Legally distinct. Legally uh, distinct. Eight percent. <laughs> so I, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for that. And that one also didn't really give too much away. Yeah, I'm excited to see the the kid from uh, Hunt for the Wilder People is in there. Yes. And by the looks of it, he's he's got similar powers to the kid that uh, wakes up with his mutant powers and like he th he thinks everybody's kind of left but it turns out anybody within like a 20 meter radius of him just disintegrates and dies what i haven't seen that one shot that there's a one shot i haven't seen no man a no, it's one a, shot a comic, comic book issue. oh sorry I, I, the wolverine one shot comic book thing and, uh, okay and so Lo logan essentially say. goes and like yes i do remember. kills him because it looks like in the trailer he's got like a power dampening thing on mm. and then yeah, there's another color. shot of with uh, him without it on and there's just destruction all around him what i want to speculate wildly about all right although the we're, answer we're, seems that's to what be, we're here to the do. answer seems to be obvious is. uh is they say they they did they did all the filming they did their reshoots and they also did two hours of work in los angeles on uh un sort of unspecified cameo now i hope that that's not just the stan lee cameo yeah like mm -hmm. i i'm hoping who, that's uh who do you want well i mean obviously the first thing everyone thinks is that it's hugh jackman obviously yeah. yes. that's sort of obviously. that's the most obvious but who else could it be i mean what would what would be like a really hyped little cameo for this basically anyone from the x-men the current x-men thing mm. like even if it's james mcavoy or it, it could be anyone from the from the current thing or it could even be it like could, a patrick stewart or, it could be if they have to sort of give him some sort of like power dampening sort of ability or something yeah yeah it's something he could he could, could help be. out with yeah could he's known be... to do it in the in the past yeah. Ooh, that's actually interesting. We could speculate quite wildly about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I'd say uh, like the, the safe I'm, bet is Hugh Jackman. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm like eighty percent. Because he's the biggest know. draw, and, yeah. everybody, and, the, that, everybody and that would, would, would get the stoked. biggest crowd reaction. Yeah, it, everybody would be stoked to see it. it. It would have to be something amazing though, because obviously everyone wants Wolverine x Deadpool kind of like everyone yeah. wants that movie, and it's probably not going to happen. So it's kind, it kind of feels like two hours of work on a cameo like so this is going to be a bit of a dry hump but i also can't imagine ryan reynolds disappointing well, that badly sure, yeah I also it would i mean it's going to be something awesome yeah and it wouldn't be the first time that hugh jackman's been like okay i'm leaving the wolverine thing behind yeah. and then come and then back for a little cameo yeah. he and daniel day lewis have the best tea parties <laughs> just laughing <laughs> lost yeah, you oh, oh, you go. and then it's i like said Mark i was Hamill done. retiring his joker voice <laughs> <laughs> comes back over and over again cameos 
What about Spider Man? Because Deadpool, that that Deadpool loves Spider Man. But they were in LA. They... Yeah, but I they could think... make LA look like New York, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, they do. It will probably be a blue screen be thing anyway. CG flim What? Yeah, but I mean, legally, they can't. Uh, no, they cannot. They not can't. yet. Because, uh, yeah. Not yet, unless Disney like was like, okay, cut, cut us in a little bit, and we'll let you. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it would have to be Disney and Sony both like being like. <laughs> and who's okay, who's... so if you give us, <laughs> who's the, and, who, and who's the other one? Like a lot of... and Sony and Fox, Sony would, Fox. All three of them would have to come to a deal, I'm just and saying... Comcast would have to be like, look the other way because they're still bidding. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's, it's, it's far fetched. I thought you said this was speculate wildly time. I'm yes, speculate yeah. wildly. Okay, you, so... you land heavily into the wild. Yes. So it is Spider Man. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Spider-Man confirmed. confirmed. <laughs> I'll phone Graham. I'll double check. <laughs> oh, you do know him. Do. You do, you do know him. Yeah. Good old Graham. All right. What else is there? The Men in Black spin-off. I don't know if it's a reboot or a um or a sequel or or what. But the the upcoming Men in Black movie. Yeah, Blues Brothers. So uh, I'll the, see myself up. <laughs> the, that was good the upcoming uh, Men in Black movie has just um, cast Tessa Thompson. Nice. Meaning that it's going to be a reunion of Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth. Oh, is Hemsworth attached to it as well? Yeah, it? Hemsworth is attached to it. So it, it's it's going to be the both of them as as agents in, 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 the, in, in the Londons. Nice. Oh, and they're going to be in London. Londons, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. I mean, it, it's not Taika Waititi directing, so... Who is directing? Um, it is... Give me a second here. Ridley Scott. James Cameron. No. F. Gary Gray. We were both whale. Whose name I always read as F. Gary Gary. <laughs> F. Gary Gray, what has he done? Gary. Ah, shit, he's done, like, fucking everything, this, this F. F. Gary Gary. So, Fate of the Furious. Ah, Straight out of Compton, Friday, Italian job. You mean the Venice job? I mean, you mean the LA job? The yes. Oh, all right. I do mean the LA job. The Italian job, LA heist, Citizen I believe was Kane, the name. Vertigo, The Birds. Ah, <laughs> that's where I know it from. Yeah, this guy's really prolific. Yeah, he's been doing a lot of stuff. Oh, well, he did also do Be Cool. So he's pretty good with the, the comedies. With, with the ha-has. The lols. Uh, yeah, no, it had somewhat of an action action turn to that, but I mean, yeah, it looks like he could easily do He's got the a chops good job there. A good job. I, I trust him more than Men in Black 3. I trusted Men in Black 3 less before the casting announcements. Yeah. Yes. Because if it is in any way comedy related, yes, please have Hemsworth there. Absolutely. Yeah. Because he is a comedy actor. We, yep. we now know this. Yeah, that's he. He's been wasted as an action star. Pretty Absolutely much wasted. Okay, so uh, uh, moving on to another like uh, team up thing. Dave Bautista mm -hmm. and uh, Kumail Nanjiani are starring in a uh, what's gonna be kind of a comedy version of that uh, Tom Cruise movie Collateral. All right. Essentially, where uh, uh, the Collateral was basically where Tom Cruise's hitman guy shoots people in the face, man. Hmm. Um, that's a good role for it. That's a, that's a he good... Carries briefcase. He he got into a taxi cab driven by Jamie Foxx's character and then essentially forced Foxx's character along with him on these missions. And now this is going to be like a, a kind of comedy version where uh, Kumail's going to be the an Uber driver by the name of Stu. So the movie's called Stuber. Of course it is. And uh, Batista's going to be like a loose cannon cop who commandeers <laughs> his Uber. <laughs> and essentially drags him along on all the shenanigans. So that'll become a Batista bear. Is that is that a line from the film? This is a I, Batista I, I believe, bear now. I, no, that's actually one of the um, one of the uh, quotes that they have on the poster from one of the reviewers. A true Batista bear. <laughs> <laughs> Geostorm, entertaining. <laughs> a film. <laughs> <laughs> it exists. A film! Exclamation point. <laughs> From Gary six six seven. A film. <laughs> sure, sure does exist. Definitely was. Geostorm shots. is the dot 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 
film I've ever seen! <laughs> Exclamation point. So the brackets, sick. <laughs> Yeah, so, so, so that Batista, should be fun because cool. I'm enjoying yeah. Batista's acting recently. Yeah. He's, He's stepping great. up. Uh, like he was great he was, in Guardians. He, he was, was excellent in Blade Runner. In Blade Runner. <laughs> <laughs> what a <laughs> kidder! Like, With those tiny glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he kidding? <laughs> I'm <laughs> a <laughs> robot. <laughs> <laughs> I fire worms. <laughs> It's like it's like oh he's gonna pull out some carrots or some lettuce and it's just like worms. It's like, <laughs> like that wasn't even in the script. Everyone just laughed and they let him keep <laughs> it in. <laughs> that was the prop. It was a bassist on set. He just played the Seinfeld theme. <laughs> that was great. I just, I'm just imagining Batista in his trailer now, I'm just like giggling to himself when he puts worms in his pockets in preparation. <laughs> Ryan Gosling completely in character, methoding, just sees the worms. <laughs> <laughs> they actually had to film their scenes separately because he just kept breaking. Yeah, just right. Brian's character uh, uh, was actually played by Jimmy Fallon at first, <laughs> but he just broke too much, so they had to replace him. <laughs> Get off the set, you're fired. We can't. Good guy. Okay, yeah. so, so next little uh, bit of news. Mm -hmm. uh, the Predator has gone into reshoots. Cool. Is it? Um, but that's not the important part of the story. The important part is the trailer is apparently is that, coming soon. Wait, when? which which predator is that? Is that the, that's the, the Shane the remake one. of the? Oh, is that the, so? That's not the Harvey Weinstein biopic. A Dave Batista production. Gee, Dion, that was a real Batista book. And I am now adopting that into my vocabulary <laughs> <laughs> for all time. No, no, it's, part of, it's part of your uh, podcast's law now. Yeah. <laughs> it's an I established term. A great joke is a butty stuffer. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Alright, so, so the, yeah, the, it's, uh, they've gone the in to do a little reshoots now because um, audiences were a little mixed on certain parts in the test screening. Mm -hmm. Which. I don't know, because it, it's apparently reported problems of the mix between comedy and action. Mm. But, like, you got Shane Black. Got That's Shane what he Black. does. He does comedy, he and, comedy action. and action. I'm always, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's it's so difficult because a, a test audience could be, about, like, they could be right. They, they, yeah, could they, could be, be they could be totally right. And they could be like, hey, like, this isn't working. And it could end up for the best. But then it could also be I Am Legend. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That why I'm Legend was That's why the yeah, ending they, was changed. They yeah. actually had the original, really? the original ending, which actually made the film make sense. Like from the story, that you makes know, the book where good. he is the legend of those sort of yeah. The the, the world's moved beyond him, and he's now the villain, the devil. Yeah, like because he comes out and, and snatches fucking, them and murders them when they're asleep. You know, like he is sort of this legend, and the audiences just didn't like that ending. So That's they, a good ending. Well, obviously, because it, it's the it, it's the thing that makes <laughs> the, the whole movie. theme. It's, the, it's, it's like it's, it's the it's the entire the that. whole thing is building to that. Like he's their boogeyman. He's actually like the, he's the villain, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. He's like the, the world has moved on. He's sort of this remnant. You know, he's like this old god kind of thing. Yeah, it's lurking um, in the shadows. And then they were like, no, they don't like that. So it got that whole weird like religious Jesus, ending. Like here's our his new blood saves them, power. and yeah, and yeah. it's just. The butterfly. So that's the thing is like sometimes it can work out really well. Sometimes not so much. Yeah. My problem with, with test audiences is they're more often than not made up of people. Yes. And, and people like, yeah. historically are A garbage and B know nothing about anything. That's the thing is I mean if you look if you look just historically, I mean I don't wanna sort of stereotype or anything mm -hmm, but i mean people committed some of the worst atrocities in history i, I mean would, I would, some I of mean, the worst the, atrocities in human I history would yeah. that almost all murders people are committed related. by people by, and i know it's not pc to say that anymore but like but it's just statistically that's just the facts it's the people facts. it's it's people exactly people and, are and the now worst they want, kind of and humans. now they want the, and now they want like the people that committed like genocides uh, to also grade their films and make changes accordingly. It's almost See, like, that's why I'm nervous next? about it. What's next? They're gonna put, like, groups of people together to judge whether or not someone's guilty of murder? Yeah, it's it, it's a slippery it's a, slope. That's, that seems a little bit hypocritical, to be honest. <laughs> exactly. To have a person judging whether a person hey, is man, a murderer. We live in yeah. a crazy world. Crazy. But yeah, reshoots and trailer coming yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for that. <laughs> I, re I really hope like that it's not to the movie's detriment. The mm. reshoots, 
because I'm I really do enjoy Shane Black's style of film. Like yeah. Nice Guys was easily my favorite film of 2016. And I really enjoy The Predator, so hopefully they can come together. And Keegan Michael Key's in it, so you know. Nice. There's gonna be shenanigans. There's, there's gonna be so many shenanigans. Like the test audience, like just that tall, funny guy. <laughs> like we we just don't like that don't funny understand. guy. Just cut him out. Just, just why just, is he? Just why is he so tall and funny? It just yeah. doesn't make sense. Like, funny guys. Could he be so shorter and more serious? And they just get Peel in just to be himself. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, what am I doing? Like I should be directing a, a film. What's what's going on? Like <laughs> that's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> That's what we want. <laughs> That's what the audience we wants. Want that fourth wall break. It's like, guys, this is this is bullshit. Like, you put a bag over my head. You brought me to this movie. Say, like, perfect. Fucking oh. gold. <laughs> the test audience are like, yeah, yes, so short and serious. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right now. This is gold. <laughs> so yeah, that's. Who knows? People hopefully, really, hopefully, really gets, hopefully, hopefully Shane Black has got enough clout that. You know, he can, like, yeah. That he's hopefully, back. he's that got enough enough. control over the project. Yeah, that, that it's not gonna sort of be a train wreck. I, I'd be very curious to know which way the audience skewed, though. Like, if they were like, there isn't enough action, or, or there isn't enough comedy. Or if, um, if it was a anybody who enjoys the DCEU really in there, then it's probably oh, there's too much comedy. Yeah, probably. there wasn't enough neck snapping. Why is there not more neck? <laughs> <laughs> It's like wow. the use for Black Panther that we saw, where the one person was like, ah, uh, <laughs> not, not enough punching. punching. <laughs> it's like, and the other person I, was like, no, no, if no. If only there wasn't so much, much. punching. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. This is why you can't trust people. Yeah, people, people are terrible. Uh, speaking of people being terrible, mm -hmm. uh, the backlash towards The Last Jedi is not going no, that's the terrible part this yeah. is the good part it's not going to affect the way that ryan johnson is going to do his trilogy good i'm like, putting my hands up right now in celebratory part. i like, re he, actually he rewatched last jedi it. last night nice so good Did it so hold up good. is it as good that <laughs> yeah, next dude, time it's it, it's every now and then you're like wow this this bit was this was like amazing and it's like oh crap we're only a third through this thing like, oh, and then it's like the next yeah you just it's a journey i imagine the canto journey. bite scene was still a little it's actually little speed bump. I, I was gonna say yeah, like it's not something that bugged me the first time around because i kind of it's it's star wars yeah, and the, i mean like the rest of like, the hype I, kind I've, of watched, it I've, watched, I've watched return of the jedi you know like yeah. i i sort of i give it a bit of leeway there but the second time around it bugged me a bit the pacing and the now watching it at home definitely could do with some choice. Like I understand why it's there and thematically yeah. and how it's establishing Rose and her whole theme of like uh, th that I picked up the it's first classist. time probably because yes. yeah. yeah and and also the the thing where um, where they let the um, the the <clears throat> Rathias what are they called Fathias oh, yeah. Fathias sorry the Fathias when they let them <laughs> the Rathas when they let the Fathias sort of go they set them free. Yeah. Um, and then Finn says, well, you know, it was worth it to tear up that town. And then she sets, like, the last one free. Yeah. And she says, now it's worth it. And that sets up her line at the end. You know, that's how we're going to we, win. We Not love. by destroying the things we hate, which is what Finn was focusing yeah. on. But by saving the things we love. So, like, it sets that up, but it still kind of feels like... Yeah. Could have been better. Yeah. yeah. It, it, 7 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a seven out of ten and a ten out of ten movie, so it's, yeah. it's gonna so it's, distract. It's, yeah, but it is. Definitely. Yeah, it's a speed bump. That's like yeah. it, would, it would be a cool little short, but in yes. a movie, it's... actually, you're right. Yeah, you're that totally would be right. that would be cool. Yeah, but it's uh, but other than that, like it's there's just so much good in there. It's just that throne room scene, and then we're like where Ray's hand comes up and she catches the lightsaber, goes dun 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 dun. dun. And it's like, Argh! John Williams, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was him. Ooh. Whoa, I just channeled him. <laughs> he presented. <laughs> he <laughs> just he doesn't <laughs> actually he doesn't write stuff out of sheet music. He just sings it like exactly like that into a microphone. <laughs> and he's just got like this legion of orchestra. He's going like, oh, oh, shit. Just panicking and <laughs> no, no, trying to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, in a in a in an interview, like uh, Ryan Johnson was asked about like the fan backlash and stuff like that. How he was do you like, "Feel about the haters." Look, every Star Wars movie is gonna have haters because the fans are like super passionate about it. Mm. I like but as movie. as creators, we can't listen to absolutely everybody. Like it it 
it's not the right way to do things. So that's how you're going to get a shit product. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers. <clears throat> so, yeah, he's very much just moving forward with his own vision, and Disney's completely behind him. Good. Good. Absolutely. Give him money. Give, Give him, him money. Lots he makes of good money. Star Wars movies. Yeah, exactly. Do that. <laughs> do, do, do that <laughs> thing, Disney. <laughs> hey, Disney, you know how you're paying us off to hate Warner Brothers? Yeah. Where's my check? <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't cleared yet. Uh, well, it's time for you to do us a favor. <laughs> Give Ryan Johnson lots of yeah. money. Come on, tit for tat. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. It's a, it's a give and take. Professional relationship here. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm all aboard for that Ryan Johnson trilogy, and do, do. I'm glad that he's not that he's letting not, he's not Warner get Brother That he's it. not disheartened. Because I imagine as a, as a creator, it must be shitty to hear people... Yeah. Like, destroy, like, destroy your passion project and rip it apart. Because, mm. like, having and watched a couple, like, videos of people that really didn't like it. The, the thing that right. really bugs me about, the, about something like that isn't just, like, hey, someone hates my thing. It's a question of, like, someone in a very misguided way who very clearly didn't pay attention, mm. like, close attention to the film hates the film yeah it's like it's not it's not that you like like you can't that you you can't respond it. you can't respond to people like if someone hates the film yes like even if he could hypothetically respond that's thing is like there's thousands or tens of thousands of people who hate the film and they hate it over ridiculous reasons mostly yeah. not everyone but i mean for the most for part the, most part, yeah. the, the reasons i see throw yeah i see thrown around are reactionary they're sort of these visceral responses that ignore star wars history the were like stupid things like um why is um what's a ad, ad, vice admiral holder why is her hair purple oh rah, rah, rah. where it's like, like it's, it's super fleshed out in the in the books and everything you know like it's a way for her to get attention you know her relationship with leia is explained like how she knew about credit it's all explained and we're we're used to that with star was so far you know the emperor was only fleshed out in the prequels and the expanded universe yeah and no, people when they watch was. the original trilogy watch it with that in mind with all that knowledge <clears throat> but they're not giving the new forms the same leeway to like hey the, the it's a film that works on its own the backstory and stuff is going to be fleshed out the way it always has mm. in subsequent films in books in the comics all of that but they're like no they no, want it I all want it in that film the original trilogy didn't need it but well, this yeah, one I is. Want a Warcraft minutes. is proof that a movie can be ninety percent explanation and still be yeah, and and be shit. A movie. What, yeah. So the you, you can't have exposition dumps inform your characters. Yeah. And, just yeah. can't. and and it's and it's like Snoke, for instance. I mean, Snoke, you understand him immediately. Yeah. He serves his purpose, and they can flesh him out later on. He's a prime evil. Like they did with the Emperor. You need to understand. Yeah, it, 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 it's Kylo's character is formed in relation to him. It's not about him. No. Like, and, it doesn't... Like, they, you don't need a five-minute info dump of, well, what happened in the last 30 years was... Years exactly. Ago. That's why in the original trilogy, Palpatine had such, like, a massive fight before his death, and he wasn't just, say, thrown down into a big <laughs> hole by Darth Vader. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, the funny thing is that the, a lot of the, the criticism of, of Seven was you know that it, it was too derivative of the other forms and the, the criticism of the last jedi is that it's so different but it's not really not the more you look punching. at it it's like no, too it's much so <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. the same thing. it's so it's actually as derivative as seven was yeah. like oh, not in a bad way no. in, in the way that a sequel needs to be but it, it there's so many analogies for everything in there yeah you know like the, what Luke's position like oh Luke just goes to a place and he goes there to die and he never comes back to help it's like Yoda <laughs> yes Yoda just jumps jumps straight in a starship to be fair Obi-Wan did jump in to help after a lot of yeah coercion. But, but, but a lot of coercion and like and a lady asking nicely yeah very nice um Mm. And so Luke kind of found the happy middle ground. Yeah. It's like he stayed and died like Yoda, but he also went and helped like Obi Wan. 
he had his cake and ate it. That's perfect. <laughs> That's just the perfect synthesis of two great Jedi masters. What are you talking about? Ryan Johnson's ruined Star Wars forever. Oh no! Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, he he had no original ideas at all in his nope. movie, and then had too many original ideas in his movie. It was movie. a mess. <laughs> it was a mess. <laughs> all right, what's next? Uh, next, the, the uh, Doom movie, the Doctor Doom movie. Uh, what do we know? Oh dear. What do we know? What do we know? We know Doctor that Doom is my favorite. The the creator, the writer, whatever of um, Legion, mm -hmm. uh, one Noah Hawley, um, he's helming the whole thing. All right. So Le Who? Legion's doing pretty well. The guy responsible for Legion, the All right. TV series. Okay. All right. um, did. And he's doing pretty pretty well with that. All that bugs me is that they're making a Doctor Doom film. Like, they're not making a film featuring Doctor Doom. They're doing, like... Well, no, they're, they're doing a film with Doctor Doom as the focal point because the direction that he's thinking of going in is having it more of, like, an espionage movie. And yes. Doom is there as the king, as the ruler, as the leader, as, of... As the leader of Latveria. Okay, all right. So it's not he's a big villain... It's that he's the ah. the maniacal leader of this country. He's that great. sounds better. Doctor Doom's a great leader. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I kind of, I kind of, I still kind of wish they would have held off on it so that to wait you for know, that once fantastic four. Yeah. Just sort of. <laughs> Fox is just like now. Go 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 go. Quickly, while we still have it. Is this going to be their third attempt to do him, or is it yeah. the second? Uh, fourth, if you count the okay. Fantastic Four from the nineties. So yeah, fourth attempt. Wow. Um, well, fourth time lucky, as they fourth always time, say. Uh, you know, historically. Yeah. Well, fourth time's the charm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the popular saying goes, I think. Indeed. Yep. Fourth or fifth. But yeah. I, I'm really, I want to be excited because I really love Doctor Doom. Mm. He, he is my favorite Marvel villain. Second favorite for me, but yeah. He's just so cool in the comics and the things he does are for me personally like quite relatable because at the end of the day like although he's a tyrannical despot he just wants the planet to be safe mm. yeah he he's a, he is a benevolent dictator yeah i think i mean there was that one thing where he um uh, went through the vibranium vaults and stuff oh, like that panther. and spoke to the white yes. panther Totally and right. the white panther was like i've looked into all the possible futures of all the dimensions of earth and the only one where there is like absolute peace on earth is the one where you're in charge yeah, every <laughs> every other time earth is destroyed or subjugated <laughs> so it's just like the fantastic four are the villains <laughs> I they just keep stopping this benevolent, altruistic dictator from like from giving fixing everybody hover shoes. I can see why you relate to him. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, what? That and obviously your propensity for just randomly shouting, "Doom!" <laughs> I am known and am quite um, do you know yeah, what infamous I think, for that. Do you know what I think Doctor Doom's problem is? What? Branding. Yeah, I was gonna if, say his if name. He just marketed himself yeah. better. It's Doom. <laughs> Doctor Altruism. <laughs> Doctor Good for Humans. <laughs> Doctor Definitely Not Doom. Doctor Planet said Doctor Not Doom. There we go. You yeah. don't have to change too much. He doesn't have to give the business yeah, cards back. Just change the Von to Not. Yeah, you can keep the same font. Like, yeah. it all works. Yeah. I mean, he could actually do, he should do some sort of, uh, like, product tie-in with id Software. As well, I mean, that would be huge for both of them. I think, I think that, that could kind of synergy really well. would be just But like, amazing. instead of with the shotguns, he's just like, Whoa! hands out, like, teddy bears to children yeah like, <laughs> yeah. like children in children in hospitals kills universal health care <laughs> and administering vaccines to children <laughs> watch out, watch out, watch out. <laughs> just defeating polio <laughs> <laughs> take that polio <laughs> no <laughs> you got to take a bfg and just yeah. shoot economics the big in the friendly face. gun big friendly gun <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the big friendly gun 9000 economic prudence <laughs> <laughs> Planetary defense! Ah, uh, sorted. Sorted. But yeah, it, it, <laughs> you should get back to the movie. So this is, this is, this, that's the end of our episode on how Cinebeards would fix Dr. Doom's public relations <laughs> issues. <laughs> Hire us. <laughs> call us, call us. Uh, yeah, yeah the, the movie looks to be going in a, a palatable direction, though. Mm. That's All right, that's like, good. For me, that's much cooler than... That's actually very similar to what Marcus said. Mm. What's that? That he, that if the Doom movie was going forward, he wanted an almost, like, Black Widow-esque 
espionage. He actually wanted Black Widow to be in it, the one doing the espionage I into, think I remember that anymore. You remember in, into Latveria. So, guys, I think I, I think this Holy Fowler listens to our podcast. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> Definitely listens to Marcus. <laughs> We love you, Marcus. <laughs> I don't know, Marcus isn't here. We've lost like 90% of our influence. Who is Marcus? Isn't he the guy that's dead to us, you said before the recording? <laughs> I remember something like that. Uh, yeah, something like that. So I think that's uh, the majority of the news that we've covered. Let me just uh, peruse through the notes I have here and see if there's anything. Mm, it's quite a, quite a, a, a densely populated school scroll you have there mm. many a magna carta many uh detailed notes mm. Mm. hear ye hear ye okay there, there was somebody um essentially negging warner brothers to try and write batgirl for them what uh the, the american novelist roxanne gay so she essentially tweeted at them that like justice league was horrible let me just write batgirl that's cool. Is she good? Um, she's a novelist and I haven't read any of her novels. She actually did. She must be pretty good then. Well, yeah. no, writer more than novelist because she's written books. She's written for comics. Um, mm. Yeah, she did some history of Wakanda. But thing does she have any novel. skills that that would like you that know help her to write a, like a, like some sort of comic book like story using words? <laughs> any qualifications in that regard? Specifically, uh, the words. Yeah, like like. Unfortunately, using... not. Uh, oh, she's a writer. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's what they need. DC that's needs the thing. writers. I yeah. always look at their. I always look at the um, the credits. You know, and I always think there's something missing. I think that's it. Yeah, writer. That, that writer thing never comes up. With a I, W, with a silent W at the beginning. I don't know if Warner Brothers would be into it because she doesn't have an S in between her yeah, two names. She's, she's not part of the dynasty. You know, you know, like you were talking about in the credits, when like, it comes up at the beginning, and you know, you see that emblazoned stamp, yeah, property, pro property, property of the Snyder Empire. Yeah, see, mm. she's not part of that. And their and their their loyal dog Goyer. Yes. <laughs> that was a great. <laughs> Try say that again, but sound more like your cancer. <laughs> <laughs> so, if what you're saying is that she should rename herself Roxanne S. Gay, and then. <laughs> and then her. Warner Brothers will be like, yeah! yeah! <laughs> You're a Snyder, right? Absolutely, come on, boy. There's an S in there. It means hope! <laughs> 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 the Snyder means hope! Oh, no! Oh, that's the most ironic thing in the world. Oh. Yo, I just gave myself cancer. Uh, okay, so that's gonna... Yep. Yeah, that, that should about wrap it up. So, recommendations for this week. So, my, my recommendation this Friday coming out, Ready Player One. It is indeed coming out. Yours on is so easy. Yeah. That's so, um, go see Ready Player One. It's been getting mostly positive reviews from what I've seen. Positive for current Spielberg. Yeah. That's and good. and they and almost everybody who has reviewed well, it. Well, Spies got great review. I wouldn't say necessarily for current Spielberg. Yeah, but but basically everybody who who has been seeing it, who has been reviewing it, even those those who haven't really enjoyed the movie so much, have said go watch this on the biggest screen you possibly can well there you go because it's it is a visual experience. spectacle all right so mine yeah. is, mine's a little more difficult um because there's two sort of big blu-ray releases save one for next week um no 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 like uh, they're competing so i'm gonna okay. be fair uh one is the jamie lee curtis um freaky friday uh, and then also the sort of 1976 original is also coming out on Blu-ray. Uh, and the competing film is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Ah, I see Ooh, how those cool. are like in direct mm. competition. Direct competition. They're, they're pretty much the same movie. I'm actually surprised Disney didn't sort of give in and just shift their release date. I'm surprised there wasn't yeah. at the end inspired by it. Yeah. My, my favorite part of The Last Jedi <laughs> is when Luke and a Porg argue over CD. And then they get struck by lightning. And then they switch. And, and then, then they both die horribly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and, and then Luke, yeah, they switch brains. And Luke goes, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and then develops suicidal impulses and just jumps off a cliff because yeah. he sees his reflection in the water. <laughs> oh God, what am I? Uh, God, it just comes up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. At last, I have the body to take revenge on the milk. <laughs> the, the milk beast. Take that, <laughs> Take that milk beast. This is our island. 
Dicker Dudes. Uh, Thomas, you got any uh, power. recommendations for <laughs> us? I, I do have a recommendation, in fact. Uh, the remake of 310 to Yuma. Nice. It's is fantastic. That, is, is that available on the stream Uh Very likely. It Very, most, almost definitely. Almost definitely, because it's a remake of a classic with Russell Crowe and Christian Bale. Mm. All right, cool. Uh, plugs. Thomas, anything to plug? Uh, no. Uh, everybody should buy more things so the advertising industry continues. Yes, it is on Netflix. There we go. There we go. Dion, plugs. All right, you can follow me at Dion Van Heeren 1, where I tweet twice a year. Uh, and what, that's about what, what it. What are the occasions? Uh, giving a fuck. Twice, <laughs> twice a year. A year. That's a, that's twice a, a year. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty high number. Good, good batting average. Yeah. All right. You can follow us on Cinebeards on iTunes, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to get the Cinebeards a second time. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Have a Krabby's. Krabby's!